Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. And the topic for today is a variant rule. The variant rule is difficult magic item identification. Okay, so that's the variant rule for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Where can you find this variant rule? Well, apparently, if you turn to page 136 of the Dungeon Master's Guide, you'll get what is probably a less than adequate explanation about how you might go about doing this. And there's really no discussion about the pros and cons of doing this. So basically, this variant rule says that if you want to identify a magic item, you need to use the identify spell, and you can either uh, do um, experimentation around the the magic item or the magical effect in some way. There's no stipulation about anything. It's very, very vague. Or you could do both the identification spell and experimentation of some kind. So let's break that down, make uh, a clear, concise sort of look at what's going on here. So normally, magic item identification is very, very easy in Dungeons & Dragons 5e. It's not hard to do. You can get it done with no trouble whatsoever. All you have to do is use the identification spell or if you don't have that spell because you don't have somebody who can cast it or you didn't select that spell then somebody can during a short rest handle the magic item uh, and that will help them to figure out the properties of that magic item. It does not reveal if it's a cursed magic item or if there's a curse on the magic item but apparently that can be done. Now I've, I have a problem with this in many respects because when I think about all of the um, items or artifacts or um, pieces of uh, uh, lost history, you know, all the things that archaeologists have found over the years that they pull out of the ground and they certainly weren't able to sit down for an hour and figure out the item. It took quite a lot of study and research. But for the sake of playing a game, it does make a lot more sense. Honestly though, I am not a fan of the short rest application and the core rules, which is really probably why there is a variant rule in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Because I'm probably not the only Dungeon Master who looks at that and thinks, I'm not happy with that, I want something else. If you prefer magic items to have a greater mystery, remove the short rest ability to identify magic items and their properties in your game. Okay, so now let's talk specifically why that might have even been put into the game in the first place. Because it's a little strange, right? It wasn't there before, and now it is. So why did the designers even bother with allowing a short rest to identify magic items? And when I say magic items, we also need to sort of talk about identifying a magic spell or property. It's not just about items. Spells can be placed on a structure. And so therefore, you need a way of being able to figure those sorts of things out without having to sort of go and do something that's going to take a lot of time. So there has to be a quick way and a short way um, to be able to do that. Otherwise, it's going to make it really difficult to actually implement the game in some way. So there are a couple of things I think are going on here. I think their intention was to simplify magic item identification for that very, very reason. Because it's not just about magic item identification, it's about magic spell identification. Detect magic's great, you can detect that something's magical, but you can only get an aura and it doesn't tell you anything else. So if you need to find more information out, there has to be a way of doing that particularly if you can't take that item away with you and then do a whole lot of research over a long period of time. So simplify it. That certainly made it a much easier for players to implement in the game. Um, it meant that they didn't have to worry about allocating a spell slot for identify. It didn't need to worry about even having somebody who could potentially cast that spell or even cast that spell as a ritual. Uh, so and it certainly means that they didn't need to worry about going to town and spending money to get somebody else to identify a magic item or a magic effect for them. So certainly I think that's part of the reason. It certainly avoided dungeon masters having to wait for their players' characters 
to cast identify. Uh, one, because they couldn't um, identify it, w whether it was because they were unable able to do so because they don't have it on their, in their spell book or they didn't have a, a caster who could cast the spell, which meant they would then, then need to track that magic item, make a note beside it. Okay, this is magical, but we don't know what its effect is. And it's not actually an, a, a huge ask on the part of a player to make a note that this is an unidentified magic item, we need to identify it. The problem is for dungeon masters having to figure out and remember that magic item came from that location and therefore it has this magical effect when they finally get an opportunity to identify that particular item or effect. And so therefore the short rest concept comes into play, right? So it certainly was very much designed to make everybody's life a lot easier. The only problem I see with this is that now nobody seems to ever take the identify spell and everybody just uses a short rest. Have you found that? I certainly think I have found that to be very much the case. Not everybody does that, but certainly to a large extent, we don't need to have a wizard. We don't need to have somebody who can cast identify. No bard, no wizard, don't worry about that. Don't need to worry about any of that sort of stuff because we can just take a short rest and figure out what it is. Honestly, the only reason I can see that it really makes sense is for very low level characters with very few spells and a restricted or limited monetary fund. So they don't have a lot of gold or resources because the Identify spell requires a few resources, doesn't it? Uh, the Identify spell has a few issues and problems or should we say cons and associated with it. And that one of them is the fact that you have to have a pearl with at least 100 gold pieces. Now for a low level character that's just not possible. That means that they're going to have to hang on to those items till they can do that. Part of the reason why the short rest was brought into play I suspect. And the other um, problem with uh, this sort of way of doing things and identify as a spell for identifying magic items is between level 1 and 2 most players, characters, will not have enough gold coins. In fact by the time they get to level 2 it would probably require almost the entire party to pull all of their resources together to buy the pearl so they can have the wizard or the bard cast this identify spell. So I can see why you might want to have it open to using the short rest. The other issue is that um, only bards and wizards have access to the important spell of identify. Now there are a few archetypes that allow you access to identify. But it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. You know, you're, it's a it's a big ask to, to hope that your players will actually do this, that they'll actually pick it up and make it happen. Because quite often they won't. The other problem is you're assuming, okay, well they can pick up the magic initiate feat. Well, they that one spell they get, that's uh, level one, will that be an an identify spell. Will it be on the uh, the bard or wizard uh, spell list? There's no guarantees. So there's a lot of different things coming into play as to why they used magic identification the way they have in the core rules. Okay, now here are the, the pros and the positives to actually using this variant rule. And I think it's worth giving it a go. First off, the positives are that the, the spell is a ritual to cast. That means you can spend a short, well it's not a particularly long period of time, it's not going to be done in combat. You couldn't normally cast um, Identify in combat anyway because normally it takes up to a minute. It's a minute, right? So, But as a ritual, it's great. So that means if somebody can cast it as a ritual, it certainly makes life a lot easier. It's going to take about one minute if they cast it using a spell slot. If they cast it as a ritual though, that's 11 minutes. So 10 minutes plus the level to cast it as a ritual. And if they cast it as a ritual, then guess what? The great thing is they haven't used up a spell slot. So there's a few benefits to using the Identify spell that I think a lot of people have forgotten about. You don't have to use a spell slot, as I said okay, to cast Identify. You can use it as a ritual. 
Uh, and the other thing is that uh, bards and wizards who have access to identify are all ritual casters. You don't have to pick up the ritual casting feat. So that's another big bonus. But it is only two major classes that have access to the spell, okay? The identify spell can identify magic item properties much faster than using the short rest mechanic. That's a fact. There isn't any way to deny it. You can certainly figure out what it is much more quickly by simply using this in that way. And I think it's a no-brainer myself. And lastly, the identify spell has a specific function. It is not vague in its process and how it works. It's worded in a particular way. It works exactly the way it's stated in the spell. There is no, let's just figure it out. We're just going to muck with it. We're going to fondle the item until we figure out what it does. So there's nothing, none of that. So it's nice and explicit about what's going on. Now, when it comes to experimentation, I'm not going to cover the variant rule in terms of identifying magic items or magic auras or um, not auras but magic properties from a spell in terms of experimentation because what they have in the Dungeon Master's Guide is vague. It is completely open to the Dungeon Master to determine in terms of uh, the time frame to create and the process and then of course the kinds of skills and the kind of character that might be able to do this based on their background, their knowledge, and sort of, you know, what they would be good at doing. Um, you know, do you need them to have arcana? I'm not going to cover that, because that is another video in itself. What I will say is this. To easily rectify any of the problems with this variant rule, you do what most dungeon masters always have done in the past. They simply go to town, they find a wizard, there's a local wizard, they pay, I don't know, some money, maybe 25 gold or 20 gold, and they pay for their services to cast the identification spell on the magic item to figure out what it is, because nobody decided to have that spell as a, a character. A character. So they didn't pick up a wizard, they didn't pick up a bard. They, that it's the easiest and simplest way to solve the problem with regard to implementing this variant rule. So all of the, the downsides that I just talked about, 25 gold for a low level character is not a big deal. And remember that often the party are benefiting from the use of any magic item within their group. And usually a lot of dungeon masters will stipulate like, if you don't know how what this sort of magic item is and how it works, you don't benefit from its effect until you have determined what it's like and how it operates. I don't think that's an actually unreasonable at all. And most players are, have become quite used to that process. We've been doing it for years and then Dungeons and Dragons 5e came along and they saw what they thought was an issue and tried to rectify it. And I can see their rationale and their reason behind it. But as I've said, the easiest way to fix it is just to say, well, you know, all you need to go is to a, a big enough town where there's a local wizard, pay them some money and they will identify that particular magic item for you if nobody in the party can do it themselves. Now I'm hoping that this has explained the whole variant rule uh, as much as I possibly can in the short space of time that I have. If it has, great. I have a lot of uh, different videos on variant rules from the Dungeon Master's Guide if you are interested. If that's not sort of your kettle of fish, then I also have lots of videos, hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters that talk about every aspect of the Dungeons and Dragons game, mostly around Dungeons and Dragons 5e because that's the current version. If you like this sort of content, fantastic. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing content like this, then I have a Patreon page where you can get access to the unlisted live streams, uh, additional content and priority on the videos that I make on my YouTube channel. I also have affiliate links to the book depository on Amazon. If you want to support me there, I get a small commission for anything you buy. And I also have a merchandise shelf underneath my video. Now, make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.